Another important concept to keep in mind in the study of human evolution is plasticity. This is the notion that from a single genetic basis, you can produce multiple different kinds of phenotypes, or multiple different kinds of morphologies. Take this tree as an example of that. Earlier in the year, this tree had a deep purple color. Now, as fall has come on, it's begun to change to red and orange and yellow. So this single tree hasn't changed its genetics over the past several months, it's simply changed its morphology, part of the natural development in this case, leading to variation. An example of plasticity that we might see in humans today, for example, is if I went from here in Boston, right near sea level, to Denver, Colorado, 5,000 feet above sea level, my body would begin to change. Over the span of several days, my ventilation rate, how rapid I breathe, would begin to increase, as I began to accommodate for the fact that there's less oxygen per volume available in the environment. I need to move that oxygen through my bloodstream more rapidly by breathing more quickly. I'd also begin to produce more red blood cells, so that I could carry more oxygen per unit volume within my bloodstream, as these are all ways of plastically adjusting to the environment. Faced with a different environment, my body has some degree to plastically change how it responds to that environment. But human plasticity isn't just a biological concept, it's also a cultural one. If you think of the increasing cognitive capabilities of humans in the Pleistocene, part of that larger brain size surely corresponds to increased abilities to behaviorally change in relationship to environmental changes. So for example, if we think about behavior then as an increased form of plasticity, something that allows humans to change their environment, for example, think about the cold weather today. I could simply be here cold and shiver, or I could put on a jacket. By putting on a jacket, I'm able to use behavior and technology to make the environment more conducive to me, to allow myself to occupy this environment despite the change in environmental conditions that might be less ideal for me. So human behavioral, cultural, technological capabilities all fundamentally increase the ability of humans to use plasticity, to use the same genotype to fit multiple different phenotypes, or to create multiple different phenotypes. This is of critical importance as we begin to think about human populations scattered throughout large parts of the old world, across different environments, environments that have different patterns of seasonality, different kind of stresses that come and go throughout the year, or throughout multiple years, or throughout decades even. Plasticity allows humans to adjust, adapt, and to fit into different environments, to occupy a whole host of environments with a single genome by producing a range of different phenotypes that go along with that. So plasticity is another critical concept for thinking about variation in the Pleistocene.